Welcome to another Workshop Wednesday. This week's edition, we're going into setting up GA4, this time using Google Tag Manager. Welcome. If this is your first Workshop Wednesday, my name is Chris Mercer. Everyone calls me Mercer. You should as well. And I'm the lead instructor here at measurementmarketing.io. And whether you found us through the podcast and talks, through some of the platforms that we share a little bit of our content with, maybe you're already a member, whether a free Measurement Marketing Academy member, maybe you're a paying Measurement Marketing Academy for Marketers member, Measurement Marketing Academy Academy for professionals or part of the Academy for agencies and teams. However you found us, we're happy that you are here. The Academy we'll speak about in just a moment, but it is our flagship training program. So if anybody is interested in actually getting a one-stop shop for all the courses you're going to need for strategy, for GA4, Tag Manager, Looker Studio, and everything else that is involved with digital measurement, this is your spot. Now, for this workshop, just focus on one new thing, one new concept, and you're going to see a lot of different things in this tech, in this uh, workshop. Now, some of them are a little bit more uh, advanced than others because this is a little bit more of an advanced workshop because it involves Tag Manager and different aspects of Tag Manager. So just do the stuff that you are comfortable with, and you can always rewatch this workshop, come back and pick up another new one thing when you're ready to build your skills. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Set up GA4 with GTM, and we're gonna do it in 10 minutes or less. We're gonna go ahead and start first with our framework. Now, the framework itself, remember, plan, build, and launch, it just saves us because we're marketing on the blind. We want a system that reliably produces revenue and profits. So this workshop, were, relates directly to this because when you plan, we ask key questions. We then gather the information needed to get answered to those questions. And Tag Manager can help us to do that because it's really built to collect that information. Then of course, we're already gonna know what actions we're gonna take based upon the answers we get. With that proper plan in place, we move on to the build. This of course is where Google Tag Manager can send information into GA4 so it knows what results we're trying to achieve. We can make sure to adjust traffic uh, with Tag Manager. We can even make sure that the information going into GA4 is more than likely to naturally tell a story between which traffic is causing which results. Then we listen. This is what you would be in GA4 uh, reports or potentially maybe a Looker Studio report. We listen to the trends and patterns. Essentially, we're looking for the conversation that's happening between the users and the website. We measure that against the forecast we should already have in place so we understand how this thing is supposed to be working. And then we go, well, is it working the way it's supposed to? And that is because you're measuring against that forecast, you automatically know where to optimize and focus your efforts so that you can reliably produce revenue and profits. That is the measurement marketing framework in a nutshell. And today's instructor is going to help us understand how to set up GA4 specifically with Tag Manager again in 10 minutes or less. So welcome, Julie Brade, take it away. So here we are inside this container where it has just basic universal analytics setups or GA3. So we have a page view, a scroll and a click. And whatever we're about to do will work even if you don't have anything for universal already set up. It's just it's going to go a little bit faster because we have some parts and pieces of when we want things to fire. And so it's going to go a little bit faster for those that already have that. So we're going to head and click on new. We're going to choose a tag and we're going to choose this configuration. If you're familiar with social media tags like Facebook or TikTok, you know that there's a initialization type uh, pixel that has to go first before everything else to kind of tell it where to go. And that's the same thing that Google Analytics 4 has. And next, we need our measurement ID. And so if you remember where to find that in your Google Analytics 4 property, and we're just going to copy that, you go into your actual property and then under your data stream, choose the data stream you want, and there it is. And so we're going to go ahead and paste this guy right here. And now we have what we want the tag to do. So the tag is always what we want it to do. And the trigger is when we want it to do it. So we're going to click on our double rings here and we're going to use just the default all pages because we want this to happen on all the pages. And then we're going to go ahead and name this. We're going to say GA4 and this is going to be a config and page underscore view. And the reason we're naming it that way is because this is the way Google Analytics 4 references their page view. So we're just keeping this naming convention kind of reminding ourselves that's what it is. So save. We are just a minutes in and we already have one down, two more to go. So next we're gonna do the scroll report. So again, we're gonna choose new, click on a tag, and then we're instead of the configuration, because we've already done it, we don't need to reconfigure, we're gonna choose event. And this is where we choose the tag or the configuration tag that we want to reference. 
and this is the one we're going to choose because that's the only one we have there. Next, we have to choose the event name that we want to use. Here's a pro tip for you. We have measure.tips slash GA4RECO. That's for recommended. And we end up here. And so here is a list of events that Google Analytics is automatically looking for. So these are not custom events. These are recommended events. And so you're able to kind of use these if any of these fit your needs. I like going to enhanced event measurement here. And this is where you can see some of the other ones like page view. That's what we just saw. Now we're going to use scroll, little S-C-R-O-L-L. -L -L, and that's what we're going to call this. And we're going to go ahead and choose this event parameters because we want to be able to see how far they are scrolling, the scroll percent or the percent scrolled. And then this word in the verbiage that Google Analytics 4 is looking for. So it's percent underscore scrolled. And even if you don't quite understand what exactly this is, you can at least start capturing that data. And we do have other workshops and lots of courses um, to, that goes through all of this in more detail. We're just trying to hurry up and get this set up so we can use this. Now, the next thing we need is a value, like what is the percent scroll? So we can click on our little variable block here and we can scroll down and we choose scroll depth threshold. This is a built in variable that you already have access to in here and so you just have to check a box and this becomes available to you so if you don't already have universal analytics already set up this is something that's a quick little checkbox and i'll show you that here in just a moment so next we need to add our win remember the what and the win and we're going to go ahead and choose that and we're going to choose our trigger that we've already created for universal now we just have to name it so this is ga4 scroll so we're going to go ahead and save that one. So two down, one to go. We're going to take a quick little detour in case you wanted to see exactly where to check that box. So here are your built-in variables. You can configure and just check the boxes down here. And so if you didn't have scroll depth threshold lighting up for you, you literally just have to check that box and telling me, hey, don't do that. We're using it somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that stays checked there. And there is no save. You just check it and you're good to go. So let's go back to our tags. And so now we have scroll, we have page view or config and page view. Now we're going on to click. So we're going to go ahead and say new, click on our tag and choose another event. And then we're going to call this one click because if we would go to our documentation, we would know that's what it's looking for. And this one does have some other information that if you wanted to, if you need this information to answer questions, you absolutely can pass this through. If you don't need any of that information, guess what? You have your what, what is, what is it? It's an event, that's a click. And now the when, we're gonna use the exact same trigger that we had before, which is all links. And then we're going to name this GA4 click. And we're going to save. Actually, I take that back. We have to make sure we tell it where to go. Then we're going to save and we're good to go. So now we're going to go ahead and switch this to by last edited pro tip so you can always see what's going on. So in a matter of minutes, we have gone from having no Google Analytics 4 stuff and now we have three that we can basically get started. So we're ready to go. So in just a matter of minutes, you're done. Now, if you wanted to enhance your click, and we're actually going to rename this to keep with our naming conventions to keep it all consistent. That's a little pro tip for you. Um, we can go in ahead in here and add a few more rows, the same thing we did with scroll, but we're going to kind of take Google up on its little tips here. Say, hey, you can throw this stuff in there too. So let's go ahead and do that. And so the, some of the things that we can throw in is a link ID. And then we can have a link underscore classes. And we're using the same naming conventions that it's saying here. Instead of class, we're saying class is. And so we're going through with that. And then we can also use a link URL, again, lowercase, and using underscores because that's what Google Analytics 4 is looking for. Now we just choose the values. Again, they're all here under your variables are the ones that we're using here. So it's just a matter of clicking on it and choosing what it is that we're looking for and link classes. And so this is click classes, link URL. 
is click URL. And you probably are like, well, why don't we just call it a click ID or click or click classes or cl click URL? Well, again, this is just what Google Analytics Force platform is looking for. So we're going to put the information. We're going to say, here's the click ID, but we're giving it to Google Analytics for in this format because that's what it's looking for. So we're just, you know, in case there's ever a report that's going to say what the click ID and click classes are, our platform, our setup is going to be ready for that information. So now we've just enhanced and upgraded our tag again, still in a matter of minutes. And we're going to go ahead and save this here. Now, your next steps would be to go through and go into your preview mode, make sure everything's firing the way it should be. Um, confirm in the Google Analytics for debug mode or debug view. You can go through and do all that fun stuff. But for this workshop, we're not going to do that because I want to show you another way to do this. So that was your first way. Again, we did it all in about five minutes and then we even enhanced it um, and took a couple of little detours. So we're still good on time. Next, we're going into a blank container with nothing in it. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to go to our admin section and we're going to choose the option of import container. And then we're going to choose a container file. And so we're going to choose a container that we have downloaded. That is the basic GA4 container. It's a JSON file. And so then we choose our workspace that we are currently using. And then just a pro tip. Right now we have a blank container, meaning there's no tags, no triggers, no nothing in here. However, if you do have anything in your container, you're going to always choose merge and rename just so you don't accidentally delete. And it will tell you if you're deleting something. So if you have a container in existence, choose merge and rename insanely important pro tip. So we're going to go ahead and choose confirm. And now we have all of this information here. Let's go into our tags. And now we have our configuration and page view and we have this. Ooh, what's this right here? Well, that's not our measurement ID, but it says it is, but it has a little squirrely brackets. Those little squirrely brackets are called braces and that means it's a variable. So let's go check that out. We're coming into our GA4 measurement ID. That's what we were just seeing. And so it tells us enter your measurement ID. So let's go ahead and paste that sucker back in there and we're gonna go ahead and save. And so now we're going to our tags again. So now our configuration and page view has that value here. And so it's going to work the way we want it to. So we have our what we're doing, our configuration and page view. And when it's doing all pages, we have our clicks and we have all of that information that we were sending with our clicks. Again, the same trigger and same thing with scroll, scroll, percent, scrolled, scrolled at threshold and here. So we have officially set up Google Analytics for with Tag Manager two times in a matter of minutes. And just a reminder, even if you have all the setup, you would still go through and preview your changes to confirm everything is working the way expected on your site. And one final reminder too, that if you do have your um, enhanced measurement still turned on, so we're gonna come over here, you would need to turn off, if you follow exactly what we just did, you would turn off scroll and you would turn off outbound clicks. Outbound clicks are um, clicks that are leaving your site and the scroll is only showing to 90%. So you would turn these off and then save so that way your data stream is not collecting this information on its own and getting information from Google Tag Manager. So you would turn those off and be good to go. And same thing if you have eventually added other videos and stuff like that, that uh, was YouTube from Tag Manager, you would make sure you turn that off. But that's another video. Thank you so much, Julie. Appreciate that. Again, those of you who are Academy for Marketers, Academy for Professionals, or Academy for Agencies and Teams, you have the uh, Ask an Instructor support section that is available to you with our instructor team, ready to help you just as a reminder, send them videos and uh, screenshots of what's going on, kind of an over the shoulder view of your questions. They will also send videos and screenshots directly back to you. So you have a more customized support because who wants to read a bunch of text messages back and forth that is available to you in Ask an Instructor support. And if 
if you're a free toolbox member, you might consider upgrading to get access to that. What was your one thing? I know for me, it was just how fast this can happen, how simple it can be with a container, right? Just keep in mind, those containers can be a little tricky. So if you haven't imported containers yet, just be go slow with that. Make sure you merge, as Julie gave you in those tips, to an existing container um, so you don't accidentally blow out your old stuff. Uh, and then, of course, just the fact that when you import that container, you've got to make sure you don't just double up the events. In other words, make sure you disconnect what GA4 is, might be doing on its own automatically using that enhanced measurement. You want to turn that off if, in fact, you're giving those events over to Tag Manager, which would be the recommended thing to do. Let Tag Manager be in charge and not uh, GA4. All right. And again, think about how it relates to the framework itself. Uh, for me, it, GA4 all day long helps me collect more quality information. Because I can collect that quality information, I can ask bigger, better questions to impact my marketing. So that's where Tag Manager really comes into play. And obviously, getting the information into GA4, it makes it a lot easier. Not to mention, you could send it to you know Facebook, TikTok, and whatever other platforms need to know those behaviors as well. Now, next week's workshop, we are sticking with GA4, this time talking a little bit about the design of proper dashboards when it comes to using GA4 to make it a little bit easier to see the story that's back there. If you are interested in seeing that workshop, all you need to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel. And of course, like the button if you hit the like button on this particular video, I am sure YouTube will then email you and let you know when the next episode is available. The other way you can get that is, of course, by joining the Measurement Marketing Academy. What we call our Toolbox Edition is absolutely free, uh, at least currently. So you can get the most recent workshop Wednesday that's back there, but it also unlocks a ton of tools. So one of those tools was going to be that container that Julie had actually showed in this training. So Julie went through and showed you the container and how she imported the script. Well, that's actually back there waiting for you in the toolbox. Again, it is a free thing that you have access to. The only thing we ask is that you use it. So after about 90 days, if you're not back there using it, we'll close the account. We'll let you know ahead of time, of course, and just make sure you don't need it anymore. Um, but if it's not something you're participating with, we'll shut it down. Otherwise, it is yours to keep for as long as you find it useful. All right. With that, uh, we do ask that you join the Measurement Marketing Academy at this point. If you haven't already, be a toolbox member so you get access to the tools and trainings. Otherwise, if it makes sense for you, potentially upgrade to the Measurement Marketing Academy. Take advantage of some of the other boot camps we've got uh, that might be something of use for you as well. To find out more about what is currently available in the Measurement Marketing Academy, just go to measure.tips forward slash get academy. You will also find how to set up a free account there as well. Again, measure.tips forward slash get academy. And with that, we'll wrap this one up. This has been Set Up GA4 with GTM. Thanks again for watching this workshop, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.